Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. Well, uh, the media are reporting that uh, President Trump uh, has told uh, friends that he plans to pardon uh, General Michael Flynn. Um, on the face of it, there's nothing uh, really very surprising about this. Uh, what is perhaps surprising is why uh, Trump should be telling friends about this. Um, he is the president, he has the pardon power, he can issue it at any moment. Why does he need to talk to his friends? If he is thinking about um, floating it as a trial balloon, then that's a waste of time as well. We know exactly how everyone's going to react. The Democrats will attack him, uh, Republicans uh, will defend him for it. So it, it, it seems pointless to start telling friends about this. More seriously, uh, it's necessary to pardon Flynn because Flynn's situation has seriously deteriorated. Um, where before uh, there wasn't really a need for a pardon because eventually, uh, despite the antics of the clownish uh, judge, he would have to drop the case against him. I mean, you know, basically the prosecution, defense, everybody's in agreement that this case should be dropped. You know, the judge can't uh, go on playing games forever. The situation has now changed because with the Biden administration apparently coming in in January and with possibility that Sally Yates will be attorney general, the very same Sally Yates who engineered this whole uh, prosecution and uh, ouster from office of Flynn, humiliation, public humiliations of Flynn, uh, the, the government will definitely uh, withdraw its withdrawal of charges and maybe think of some additional charges uh, to bring against Flynn. So Flynn is now in serious jeopardy and uh, in need of a pardon, even though he may not have wanted it because pardon is in, in some ways an acknowledgement of guilt. So my view is Trump should do it and double quick. What's your view, Peter? Oh, I have, I absolutely agree with you because he'll be in legal peril in a, in a new administration here, and particularly if Sally Yates is in the chair. Um, this needs to be just tied up and this and resolved here. Okay, um, from what I understand, Flynn is not particularly um, looking forward to a pardon. He wants, he believes in full exoneration, which would mean that the state dropping the case completely, or I should say, the judge of all people dropping it. Um, uh, and I think that the uh, tr uh, Trump's base will be very supportive of this here. I mean, there just uh, and from any way you look at this case, uh, General Flynn has been treated so badly. I mean, it, it's it's in it, it's uh, I think it's almost unprecedented uh, of uh, someone of his stature being treated this way. So um, I I certainly encourage Trump to do it. I think that. Um, uh, well, Roger Stone, his, his was commuted. I still think he should probably get a pardon on top of it. I think Papadopoulos probably should get a pardon, um, even a, a, um, a Manafort, because the things that he, um, uh, the, his uh, crimes that he was convicted of um, uh, predate the, uh, his association with the Trump orbit. So I, in that case, because it was politically motivated, they knew what Paul Manafort was doing, okay, and Rick Gates. Right. You know, and I, I encourage people to take a look at the the, the uh, interview that uh, Aaron Maté did with Rick Gates. Uh, confirms everything we've said here, and even sheds extra light on the motives of Paul Manafort, which actually was to help pull Ukraine into the Western orbit. Okay, reiterated by a witness. Okay, no Russian agent. That was the last thing he was. Okay, yeah. so um, yes, and I think that it's a. Why does Trump talk about these things? Because he likes to talk, okay. Um, I think my sense is, not having been in the room, of course, is that he's looking at timing and maybe he, that's what he was bouncing off of people, the best timing to do it. Does he do it one off or does he a whole slew of them simultaneously? Um, does he throw in Ed Snowden, which, you know, would be amazing. Um, so, um, it's it, it's time and, it, and it's certainly not unusual. Every single president uh, going out the door does a, a slew of, of, of pardons and commute, commuting of sentences and clemency and all of that. 
and, yeah. and many times it raises eye, uh, raises eyebrows. Right, but mostly in this case, for uh, mostly uh, hang on, just hope mostly for for corruption reasons. Right. This is political corruption. Uh, no, that's exactly what I was going to say. That um, uh, when Bill Clinton uh, pardoned uh, Mark Rich in the last days of his administration, that was an absolute outrage because Rich didn't deserve any kind of a pardon. He was an, a, a terrible uh, crook. And, and this was all basically just to help out um, uh, donors uh, to the Democratic Party and to Clinton. Uh, so that was, a, that, was a, that was a disgrace because the pardons should be clearly directed at miscarriages of justice. Uh, what happened to Flynn is really beyond anything that's, uh, what should be expected in the civilized society. Um, he had clearly done nothing wrong. The, the FBI people, including Peter Strzok, who had interviewed him, thought that he had done nothing wrong. He had been persecuted before that by the Obama administration, and, the, and they found that he had done nothing wrong with all the nonsense about uh, that Russian professor who, that he was supposed to have had an affair with. Uh, so it, it was really just persecution by all the Obama people and then he gets tied up in this horrible legal system. First, um, because with um, uh, Mahler, who was hoping that he could just coerce him, he just could have squeezed out of him something damaging against Trump to justify this ridiculous Mueller investigation. Flynn didn't do that. Um, and then uh, he fell into the hands of this uh, clownish uh, judge, a Clinton appointee, uh, who obviously is close to Obama people uh, and is just absolutely determined uh, to, to nail Flynn. So this was an outrage. I mean, from start to finish- well, we, we have the outrage. evidence. We have the evidence. We have the forensic evidence. Unlike the Russiagate hoax itself, there is forensic evidence of the FBI agents, including Peter Strzok, that interviewed General Flynn. They're called 302s, the notes that were taken, and basically they're figuring out what, what strategy they should pursue. They weren't, they weren't investigating. Right. They were looking for charges, okay? They did it the other way around. That's exactly it. You know, were, and just as you mentioned, it, you know, yeah. it, 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 it was Jim Comey, again, oh, yeah. going back to the Hillary emails. Remember when he came out and said there was there would be no reasonable judge would, would prosecute this? You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm furious about this to this day, George. Why is the director of the FBI right. talking about what direction right. uh, a prosecution would go? It's called the... Federal Bureau of Investigation with, you know, a stress on the eye investigation. They right. just present. They yes. don't draw conclusions. Right. Jim Com Comey did. And then you had about, yeah, but what's interesting about the same that, thing. Yeah, but what's interesting about that is that uh, the subsequently you had Sally Yates or um, uh, I forgot the name of the woman who was Attorney General at the time uh, saying, well, he, uh, you know, Comey uh, exceeded his power. Absolute nonsense. People like Comey don't just exceed their power. You know, they are career bureaucrats. They know exactly the game they're playing. The, the Sally Yates and um, the woman who was attorney general at the time were perfectly happy. Let Flynn, uh, let uh, Comey take the flag. And, you know, they, they were obviously in agreement on this. Afterwards, you know, they said, hey, well, we didn't know Flint, uh, but Comey was going to come out and talk to the press in that way. Of course they knew. That's not that's not the way governments work. I mean, they know exactly what uh, uh, senior officials are going to do. Uh, Don't insult our intelligence, for goodness sake, you know, right. for goodness. I mean, that's one of the things I've been reflecting upon is that, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, George. Maybe I, I, I look at the past uh, with uh, rose-tinted glasses, but it seemed to be in the past there were more competent people in government. All of these people are so mediocre because well, they're, they're all political they're, operatives. They're, they're mediocre, but they're mediocre with a vengeance. I mean, they, 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 they know how to, um, you know how to cover themselves. I mean, when they, um, when they sent out Susan Rice famously after Benghazi, who did all those six television interviews in which she spouted this lie that it was in response to the um, to that uh, video, the yeah. Mohammed video? They knew exactly what they were doing. I mean, you know, why why would they send out this uh, person uh, to do it? Because Hillary Clinton didn't want to uh, do it. Uh, because um, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and no 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 senior official wanted to be stuck with admitting staggering failures of uh, the United States in Libya. So they sent her out. And of course, she was the one who, who basically was um, hit with it. 
and and I pretty much put paid to her career as any kind of a cabinet official because there's no way that the Senate would ever confirm her to any position after she was caught so blatantly lying. So yeah, yeah, but- I don't know exactly how they do it. You know, they just set somebody up and they set Comey up. I mean, you know, you know that that put paid to Comey's uh, future career. Yeah, crocodile tears for Susan Rice. Her right. grift exactly. goes on. It oh, goes exactly. on. Yes, yes. No, okay, I'm... George, we're talking about pardons. Um, but the big, big one, big it's one. never been invoked. That can one. be invoked, at least as it's interpreted by the Constitution. I'll give you my theory of the case. I wouldn't be against Donald Trump pardoning himself because he, we have enough evidence now. I don't, unfortunately, I don't think it'll ever be conclusive because the Durham report and other investigations will be prematurely shut down or just drift away. But there's, there's uh, 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 clearly um, a, a, a prosecution of this president by members of the permanent bureaucracy, the deep state. And um, it essentially ir- uh, irrefutably damaged his presidency. And so, um, I think that, that there's grounds for that. Of course, it'll be controversial, but everything he does is controversial. This is one of the things I keep tr- stressing to people, but what about the reaction? The reactions are always obvious, okay? I don't see downside. I don't see downside. Well, okay? well I think that the, the issue here is, I mean, there was that finding by the Office of Legal Counsel um, in the Nixon era. Nixon asked the Office of Legal Counsel can a president pardon himself? And the Office of Legal Counsel said that he would have to first step down, the vice president becomes president, then the vice president in his role as a president can pardon that uh, president, then the president can resume his functions. But there has to be a kind of a two-step process that the, the president has. Yeah, that okay, has been that's- binding. I, I mean, I, I'm not saying that that's a great finding or whatever, but that has been binding since 1974 when the Office of Legal Counsel said there has to be a two-step process. First, the president steps down, then he comes back and resumes his uh, function. But, but that is a theory of, the, uh, of a case, okay? And I don't think that it, it, it's, it's not written into the Constitution no, no, here. Um, I, 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 can, I take that on board. And the, that theory of the case is based on historical precedent. Nixon resigned in part and Ford pardoned him, okay? Right. Um, however, um, the way I read it, um, and it's very, you know, the Constitution is remarkably easy to understand, all right? And the provision is there. And I have to wonder, I'll have to go check the Federalist Papers, what the thinking of the founders were. Um, Because it is a very interesting thing. Uh, There's probably nothing else like it in the world. So I think it's something that we think. Yeah, yeah, the one drawback to, let's say if if Trump were to do that, and let's say he says, okay, I'm going to step down for two days, ten steps in, pardons uh, Trump, and then Trump resumes the office of president. The one drawback there, I think, is that Pence might then condition it on Trump never running again, uh, because Pence might say, oh, "Well, I won't issue it unless unless you commit yourself to not running again." I mean, he almost certainly would ask him for that, uh, and I don't think Trump would would agree to any such thing. So, you know, I I, I agree with you. I mean, I think Trump I, I don't think it. They, you know say just pardoned himself and, you know, and let 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 you know let I, I think get, the, you know getting let, the, let the chip fall. No, I. I, I don't see any kind of conditionality in that. No, that's too, it's too risky and it, it gives too much um, uh, power uh, to another player uh, that is unnecessary here. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't want to see, see, this shows how old fashioned I am and maybe just my age here. I do like the tradition of not going after former presidents, okay? As much as I think George W. Bush should stand trial for war crimes, um, I, 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 I um, err on the side of tradition. And you know what, for the most part, George Bush kept his mouth shut, okay? For the most part, okay? So, yeah, but, um, no, I, but, I, I agree with that. And, but I think the other problem in the, in the Trump case is that even if he pardons himself, he is only immune to federal prosecution. He would not be immune to the state uh, governments going after him. And that I think will almost certainly happen. You know, we've already seen what the, uh, the New York Attorney what? General, uh, the New York, uh, the Manhattan DA, they will definitely go after him. So well, he, I he think can't, that the, he can't that, pardon himself against from those. I, I'm not sure. I, I, it depends on what the, how, what the pardon, the conditionality of the pardon. 
because you have to remember, I'm going to try to remember from 1974, um, uh, um, Nixon was pardoned for any real or alleged crimes committed while in office. Okay, and that was blanket. Okay, right. That no, was I think that yes, yes, while in office. In other words, yes, that. Um, but they could still go after him for anything that he did um, before uh, he went to office. Uh, I don't think he had anything. Okay, it, 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 it was, in the case of Trump. It, it, but I'm just saying, in the case of Trump, the, the New York uh, uh, Attorney General and the Manhattan DA would go after him. For things that he had done before, you know, they would go after him for tax uh, reasons. They would go after him for the, uh, the Trump University. I mean, they would just keep inventing all sorts. Yeah, but they were doing that before he was president. Okay, so I, I, okay. I, well, I, yeah, but I, yeah, I, they did. I'm not saying they're going to succeed, but I'm saying that. Remember they, they the, 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 the Mexican sounding name of the judge. Remember some kind of <laughs> right. on that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Right. Yes, yes. Okay, but I mean, I, I, I think it, we should be really serious about this because I think it is a serious matter because of um, his own administration. Um, we have the evidence of it. Uh, people within his administration and obviously the Obama Biden administration um, used the tools of the government and politicized it, them against him. And so I think there's a, a case to be made. And I, I'm going to stay steadfast with my position. No matter what he does, they're going to hate him. So. I, I think we should entertain the idea. Yeah, I, no, I think that's, uh, I, I think that's um, absolutely reasonable. I don't think he's going to do it, to be honest, I, because I don't think he thinks that he has done anything wrong and he has any reason yeah. to pardon himself. And, you know, if, if the uh, Biden Justice Department wants to go after him, then I think he'll say, OK, come after me. Try, try to make your case. I've got a powerful team of lawyers uh, that are going to fight you. And Seventy-three million supporters. <laughs> right, exactly. So, uh, yeah, so I, 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 I don't think it's um, uh, it's going to happen. Um, I, I, but I, I actually do think that these um, Democrats, both at the state and at the federal level, are really, really. I mean, as you say, stupid or vindictive or whatever, uh, and, and they will go after him. I mean, it's like for them, they're filled with such hatred for him, and they're so desperate to teach. Trump and people like Trump a lesson, never, never tried to be a populist again, that they would, that they would do this. Um, I, I don't think it's going to succeed. I mean, I just think they just don't have a case. I mean, I, I haven't heard even a reasonably plausible case of what it is that he has done that, that, that's wrong. Yeah, it's, it's a prosecution in search of a crime again. It, it doesn't change, does it? No, no, I think that's right. Um, all right, well, we'll uh, maintain our laser-like focus as always. And we'll see what happens. So thanks very much, Peter. And remember, if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon.